So the role of PDL1 as a biomarker may be among the most controversial areas in, uh, in the checkpoint inhibitor story. So uh, in melanoma, they have seen tremendous results with the checkpoint inhibitors. And uh, early on in the development, the melanoma physicians were very dismissive of uh, the role of a biomarker in general um, because they were seeing such uh, good responses. Uh, nonetheless, many of the studies in non-small cell lung cancer have specifically sought out the biomarker. And um, there have been many different biomarkers that have been assessed, but the one that has been assessed m most uh, most strongly in a clinical setting is the expression of PDL1. Again, PD1 inhibitors are blocking the interaction between PD1 and PDL1, so it seems reasonable perhaps that uh, the degree of expression of PDL1 would correlate with the response to, to drug. And in a very large study, um, in which we required all patients to have a biopsy around the time of therapy, uh, looking at Keytruda, uh, we saw that there were tremendous differences with respect to response rate, progression-free survival, as well as overall survival um, with patients who had a high degree of staining for PDL1 uh, doing significantly better than patients who had low degree of staining. Um, when that data was published, there was some concern because uh, there certainly were patients who had low level of PDL1 staining or even absent PDL1 staining who did have responses to the drug. And uh, the thought was, how could you leave people behind? How could you not uh, give patients the, the PD1 or PDL1 inhibitors, for instance, if you are in a situation where there are some patients who have no staining who still respond. And uh, that's a very fair criticism. However, when you look at the data from, um, from the Checkmate 057 study, uh, what you see is that they're, again, now in this case, they actually weren't treating everyone with Optivo. They were randomizing patients to receive either Optivo or Taxotere. And, uh, and they did identify one cutoff where if you look, there was tremendous benefit in patients who had high level staining, but in patients who had lower level staining, uh, those patients did equally well, whether they were on uh, Taxotere or Optivo. And uh, the data from the Poplar study with atezolizumab, um, where they look at it slightly differently, they look at not only tumor cells, but they also look at the PDL1 expression on infiltrating immune cells. Um, in that study, uh, again, they identified patients who had higher degrees of staining who did uh, particularly better. And at least numerically, when you looked, there was a group that they were able to identify where it looked like they did a little bit better if they got taxatier. So um, this is still an area that is, uh, is, that is under active investigation. It is quite controversial. Um, and it's the additional thing that's important for patients to know is that, uh, that it's uh, going to be a very hard situation because the way drug development currently is, uh, one essentially gets credit, additional credit for developing a biomarker along with the drug. And um, so, for instance, in Keytruda, um, even though they had just a phase one study, that phase one study, which showed clear correlation with a biomarker, uh, may hasten that drug being available uh, for patients. But the challenge in that is that each company has their own diagnostic test. And it can be confusing because the tests are not identical. As I mentioned, atezolizumab evaluates both tumor cells and immune infiltrating cells, while the other tests uh, really evaluate uh, tumor cells alone. And similarly, the sensitivity and specificity of the antibody can differ. Now, that I know gets very technical, but I think the, the, what a patient can take from it is that 30% staining for PDL1, for instance, with one antibody doesn't mean that you would have 30% staining for PDL1 with another antibody. And so, to some extent, each company has looked at their own antibody with their own drug. And I think this is going to be something that is confusing to patients as, uh, as these things roll out. And there are many efforts underway to sort of harmonize this, and hopefully we will be able to get to a point where it is easier for, uh, for patients and clinicians to interpret the data.